Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, this is a video to talk about the calibration and functional process of the XR2206 kit that we've helped to develop. Uh, the basic overview is, uh, from a hardware perspective, is you've got four onboard potentiometers, uh, your output terminal, your input terminal, you've got your positive and your negative reference voltage, and there's a ground node in the middle. You've got your dip switch that offers your different levels of uh, frequency. So right now it's set for lowest level of frequency, and there's four different levels that is talked about in the uh, document that is found on our eBay store and on our uh, website at engineeringshock.com. And you've got your switch that switches between triangle uh, wave and sine wave. Now there's a little bit of a process to this. If you're buying this as a module, you're looking at this video to calibrate. If you've bought this as a kit, we have another video showing you how to put this kit together. Uh, but this video will be the second, is a continuation of that because we're going to show you what each potentiometer does. We're going to show you how to use the output, how to, how to use the input, and we're going to show you how to calibrate it. So, first of all, let's power it up. So right now, I've got my positive lead connected to the V plus pin, which is the far left, and my DC ground pin, which is connected to the V negative pin. Now, this is actually going to create a, a positive and negative voltage reference so we can actually get a real sine wave and triangle wave from the output. So when we power it on, you know it works when the LED turns on. Right now, I'm powering it, the device at around 12.2 volts. That's a good calibrating voltage, uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. So, uh, first of all, the only potential, once you've calibrated the unit, you're only going to use, worry about these two variable resistors, or potentiometers. One varies the frequency, and one, frequent, well, one varies the amplitude. So let's look at the oscilloscope. Once calibrated, you can use R5 to vary the amplitude, and R6 to vary the frequency. There are two f output functions, and that's sine wave and triangle wave. And uh, what we're going to talk about is the, uh, the only potentiometers that you're going to use commonly are uh, R5 and R6. R1 and R7 are used to calibrate your unit. And once you're done calibrating, you're going to place a little bit of glue on the potentiometer heads so that this, it stays calibrated. Now before we get to all that, if you don't have a probe to use with the output of your XR2206, you can do what I do. You can solder a wire to the outer casing of the output jack, or at the side. That is your output reference ground. And then right in the back, the signal line. You can solder a wire there. Or what you can do is you can solder a wire here, your negative reference wire, and uh, your positive reference reference wire right here on the board. So let's do that right now. So now we're ready to calibrate. What we need is a 100k resistor, preferably. You don't really need a resistor, but it's nice to have one. A breadboard, uh, if you have one, uh, and an oscilloscope. Okay, and of course your power supply. So we're going to apply power here, and we're going to probe our output along a 100k ohm resistor. Again, it's not necessary, but I'm going to use it for the calibration process. So let's hook it up. So now I've got my probe set up. To my XR2206, and I've got my power supply connected to my DC power supply. Connect your oscilloscope probe to the positive lead of the output. And make sure you have a tiny screwdriver, screw head, or sorry, flat head, so that you can make fine adjustments on uh, R7 and R1. When you power up your device for the first time, you might see something like this. Now, the, uh, the switch, the toggler switch that switches between triangle and sine wave, is flipped is facing down right now, and that's supposed to be triangle, but that's not a very good triangle wave. And if we flip it up, 
that's certainly not a very good sine wave. So ideally, we want to have a sine wave that has a positive swing that equals a positive, uh, like say, a positive swing of uh, two volts and a negative swing swing of negative two volts. So a peak to peak value of say four volts. For example, so what you want to do is first things first. Let's actually find our sine wave. Play with uh, R7, one of our onboard uh, calibration potentiometers. That we'll notice that that sets an offset. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Now, uh, play with R1 until we find the sine wave. Oh, there we go. Now you can actually shape your sine wave. You turn R7 all the way right, or rather R1 all the way right, and it'll start looking like a triangle wave. Start turning it left, and you can form your nice sine wave. So now, what you can do is you can start messing with the offset. But before we actually do that, before we set our offset, once you're happy with your sine wave, switch back to triangle wave. It doesn't look like a triangle wave anymore right now. So let's turn our amplitude down using R5, and we'll switch back to sine. And just to get a nice time per division here, I'll switch my oscilloscope, and I will switch my amplitude, oh, up the amplitude. So, here's where we want to get a positive swing that equals the negative swing. My ground line is right on the middle here. So right now I've got more of a negative swing than I do positive swing. So I'm going to have to mess with R7. Turn R7 right to bring the offset down, which is not what we want. We want to bring R7 up. So what helps, to do, what helps you here is actually the amplitude adjustment. You set the amplitude to match your second division, the positive division line. Pardon the triggering on my oscilloscope. And you can bring that the amplitude, the positive amplitude, up to say 2 volts. And then you can set the offset to match the negative. So right now, we've got just about... 4 volts peak to peak, 2 volts positive and 2 volts negative. It's a nice looking sine wave, and of course we got to bring our amplitude down to get our triangle wave not saturated. Now when you when it, the triangle wave becomes a flat a flat top and flat bottom, it means that the it's it's being saturated. So if you want a nice triangle wave, you got to adjust the amplitude. There's your sine wave. There is your triangle wave. Now, once you're completely happy with that, glue down R7 and R1 so that they don't, you know, they don't move. So again, just for reference, triangle wave, switch down. Sine wave, switch up. Amplitude of the output signal. Frequency adjustment find a frequency adjustment offset and the shape of your sine wave now this dip switch right here will give you the frequency ranges and they're connected to these capacitors here now uh, look at our technical document. You can see the schematic. You can see all of the different uh, design data and the different uh, frequency ranges. That is our low frequency range. Second lowest, second highest, and highest. But you can reach some. You can reach some extremely high ranges if you leave all of them off. Now, you flip them into on position, there is an on indicator where my, where my screwdriver is. Now, again, there we have a video that shows you how to put this kit together, and our instruction video is very detailed. So, don't hesitate to ask us any questions. Uh, on the listing, you should be able to find the technical data, the data sheet link, uh, and both our calibration video and our, uh, our uh, assembly video. 
So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks for watching.